Now we're going to take a look at ordered symbol table operations using the binary search tree data structure as the underlying implementation. Well, uh, each one of these operations are fairly straightforward, uh, but uh, just to uh, check our ability to manipulate this data structure, we'll take a look at each. Suppose we want to find the minimum key uh, in a binary search tree or the maximum key. Uh, well, just looking at one example, uh, you can see almost immediately what to do. Uh, to find the minimum, we move left from the root until we find a null key. That's where the smallest key in the data structure is. To find the maximum, we move right from the root until we find a null key. Uh, what about floor and ceiling? Well, those are a little bit more complicated uh, and we'll have to, uh, not quite the same uh, as in uh, the ordered array for binary search. So we have to do a little bit more work for that. So uh, just for example, let's take a look at the problem of computing the floor. Uh, so what we want to find is, uh, so say we're uh, seeking uh, the floor of G. So that's the largest key uh, in the data structure that is less than G. In this case, the answer is E. So uh, let's just take a look at uh, what we have to do in the tree, the path we have to take in the tree to figure that out. Well, uh, so we're looking for the largest key that's less than G, uh, and we have S. Uh, well, that key is definitely going to be in the left subtree. Uh, it's not going to be bigger than S because S is bigger than G, so we go to the left. So now we're sitting at E, uh, and so uh, what's the largest key that's less than G in this, in this tree here? Well, it might be E, uh, but there's no way that it's to the left of E because those keys are all smaller than E and therefore smaller than G, so E's a candidate, uh, but it might also be in the right. Uh, so uh, we move to the right in this case. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, that's uh, <clears throat> if k is uh, equal to the key at the root, the floor of k is k. If k is less than the key at roots in the left subtree, that's the one we just did. Uh, if it's greater than the key at the root, the floor of k is in the right subtree if there is any key smaller than k in the right subtree. So in this case, there's no key smaller than G in the right subtree, so therefore the answer is E. So our code has to check for these three cases. <clears throat> and here's the code that does it. It's not that much code, it's just complicated code to uh, understand. Uh, so uh, if we uh, find our key, that's the floor. Uh, if we're going to the left, uh, we find the floor of the one on the left. Uh, and on the right, uh, we have to uh, do uh, a little bit of tricky code uh, to make sure that uh, we return uh, the floor in the right subtree if there's some tree there. If there's, if there's no uh, node there, then, uh, then uh, we, we return uh, the root itself. Uh, so uh, that's a, a implementation, but that code is uh, definitely tricky. Uh, and there's similar code uh, for ceiling. Uh, so now, uh, what about uh, operations like rank and select? Uh, how many keys are there less than a given key? Uh, and uh, give us the seventh largest key. To facilitate uh, implementing uh, those operations uh, and also size, uh, all we do is keep an extra field in each node, which is the number of the nodes in the subtree rooted at that node. So this tree's got eight nodes in it. Uh, this subtree has six nodes in it uh, and so forth. Uh, and those counts uh, are going to not only enable us to immediately implement the size function, just return the count at the root, uh, but they'll also they'll give us good implementations of rank and select. So let's look at those now. So we add a count field to every node. Uh, and then to implement the size function, uh, well, if it's null, we return zero. Uh, so a client might call us for null tree. Uh, or uh, <clears throat> or an empty tree. Uh, otherwise, we return uh, x dot count, which is the number of uh, nodes in that in that subtree by definition. Uh, the way we maintain there's a number of ways we can maintain the thing, but uh, the one that will adopt uniformly because it adapts to more complicated situations is just before uh, we're done with the put operation. 
uh, will uh, say, okay, we've done all our work, uh, and before we return a pointer to the given subtree, uh, we're going to uh, <coughs> uh, uh, take the size of what's on the left and the size of what's on the right and add one for us, uh, and that's going to be our count. So whether or not there was a new node added, uh, we don't have to test for that. Uh, uh, this recursively takes care of the problem of maintaining the size in every node uh, when there's a new node inserted. Uh, and it also uh, handles more uh, general situations, uh, as we'll see later on. So that's how to maintain size. So now how do we implement uh, rank? Well, uh, it's a little like floor. It's an easy recursive algorithm, but there are uh, three cases. Uh, so uh, let's look at the, at the three cases. Uh, so we want to know the number of keys less than K. Uh, so uh, <coughs> we're going to have a recursive algorithm uh, for our given key. Uh, so let's, one of the easy ones is if our key is equal to uh, the, if we're <coughs> to the uh, a key at the current node, uh, then the number of keys less than our key is the size of the left subtree of that node. Uh, so if we're looking for uh, the uh, rank of E, say, how many keys are there less than E, uh, there's exactly two. That's by definition in the data structure, uh, that's the number of keys that are less than E. Uh, so that's that one uh, for rank. Uh, what about uh, uh, <coughs> So, uh, starting at the root, uh, if we have the case where uh, E is uh, less than S, uh, so the rank of E in this whole tree is the same as the rank of E in the left subtree. Uh, so that's that case. Uh, and then uh, if we're going to the right, then we have to add one for the root and one for uh, the left subtree of the root and then find the rank of us in the right. So that's an easy recursive algorithm for finding out the rank, and uh, it's definitely an instructive exercise to check that you believe that that method works. The other thing we have to do uh, is iteration, and iteration is a fundamental operation on uh, tree structure, uh, and it's based on so-called in-order traversal. And that's also a simple recursive algorithm. Traverse the left subtree, uh, NQ the key, traverse the right subtree. Uh, so to iterate, uh, we're going to maintain a queue of keys, uh, and then we're going to call uh, this recursive in order uh, <coughs> uh, method, and that method uh, is going to add uh, all the keys in the tree to the queue, uh, and then we'll just return that queue, and that's a queue is an iterable data structure, and the client can iterate that. And uh, in order is just a simple recursive method. Put everybody to the left on the queue, uh, then put the root on the queue, then put everybody to the right on the queue. Uh, and to believe this method, you just have to think recursively uh, and prove by induction that uh, this in-order method puts all the keys in the data structure on the queue uh, in their natural order. First, it puts all the ones to the left on the queue. If that, ha that happens in their natural order, then the next thing that has to appear is the key at the root. Uh, and then if the ones on the right go in their natural order, and then by induction, they're all uh, in their natural order. So that's a very simple implementation of an iterator uh, for uh, the uh, symbol table uh, with uh, comparable keys. Uh, so I uh, have to, again, prove that uh, property by uh, induction, and that's uh, easy to do. And the diagram at the right uh, gives another uh, simple way to look at it pictorially. All the keys that are smaller on the left, uh, we're going to put them out, and then we put the key at the root, and then we put all the keys uh, on the right uh, out in order, and then that key is going to have all those keys uh, in order by induction. So here's the uh, operation summary for ordered symbol table. Uh, and uh, the quick summary is that every one of those operations, well, ordered iteration is optimal. It just uh, gets them in linear time. Uh, and all the rest of them take time proportional to the height of the tree. Now, if the uh, keys are inserted in random order, we know that height uh, by analysis is going to be proportional uh, to log n. 
uh, or if it's some application where the order of insertion of the keys is well modeled by random order, uh, and that's not unusual at all. Uh, binary search tree is a simple and uh, extremely effective data structure that can support all of these operations uh, in, uh, quickly, uh, much better than binary search uh, in an ordered array, uh, which is uh, not dynamic and slow for insertion. So that's a look at binary search tree implementations of uh, ordered operations when keys are comparable.